Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and I think it's time for me to build a box to pack some of my larger woodworking tools and woodcrafting tools into. I've got a smaller type carry box, like a carpenter style box, to carry some of my smaller woodworking tools in, but I really don't have anything to transport some of my larger, you know, broad axes and felling axes and large pieces of equipment like carpenters ads and things that you would use to do major league wood processing with. And because we've got the Pathfinder Gathering coming up pretty soon, I need to get somebody to transport some of that stuff for some demonstrations that we're doing at the gathering. But I thought today we just build a quick and easy crate, if you will, to transport our woodworking tools in from pine. Stay with me and we'll get started. Okay, so we're making a couple real simple toolboxes here to transport tools in. And I've decided to make it 40 inches long so that my longest wood handled tool, which is my adze and my felling axe, will fit into this. And that should give me a nice big flat box that I can use not only for a bench top if I need to in an emergency, but I can also use it to store all of my major woodworking tools in. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Now, Again, I'm just trying to get myself a nice serviceable box that's going to last. I'm not trying to do a bunch of fancy joinery. I've pre-drilled three holes here and I'm using just inch and a half drywall screws. I think drywall screws are one of the best things ever invented for putting stuff together. I've put everything together with these drywall screws from boxes to boats and they've never let me down. You can get them in a lot of different sizes and they're not that expensive. So I ran a glue line across here piloted three holes through the first piece and then screwed into this piece so I don't split this one out. That's going to give me a good serviceable joint right there that's going to last a long time. Okay, so again, we're just making a simple box here to hold some of our tools. And it's going to be more like a crate type box. So we'll have wooden handles on it and it'll just have a fitting, a fitted lid, not hinge or anything like that, that will sit on top of it. And then we can use it like a packing crate type box. What I've done here for my width is I've measured my 1 by 10s, which is what I'm using to make this out of, is 1 by 10 stock, so it's going to be that high, which is about 9 and a half inches. Double that is going to give me my 18 and a half inch width here, so that's how long this board is. That allows me to use two boards for the bottom and two boards for the top. So I've got the length of 40 inches, which gives me the longest wooden tool handle length I've got, and then a width that's conducive to be able to use two boards side by side instead of a bunch of complicated joinery, I've got a very simple two boards butted up and that's where they go. In the old days when stock wasn't exactly the right size and things like that, and things varied and measurements varied and people wanted things certain lengths and certain widths, they had to do a lot of complicated joinery when making boxes like this. But for our purpose, it's very easy. We have dimensional lumber from a lumber yard. We know what the measurements are, and we can adapt our box to those measurements to make it easy, like we've done here with the 18 and a half inch width, so that we can use two 1 by 10 side by side here instead of having to do joinery to join them together. When we're done, we'll put a glue line in there, but as we screw this together, that's going to cause our joint. I'll also show you an old school way that they used to use to make joinery for two pieces that were butted up against each other linear here in just a minute called a pinch dog you know i was just talking about how good dimensional lumber is <laughs> it's funny because i just put this one on and it's flush on both ends here but it's sticking up probably a quarter of an inch on this side so somewhere along the line these boards are not planed to the exact width not a big deal. I can adjust for that and just take a veneer of wood off of that. It's probably, I said a quarter of an inch, but it's probably more like, huh? It's more like a quarter of an inch, actually. <laughs> you can see the stick up right there on both sides, and we're flush on the bottom. So we'll have to adjust that for that real quick before we screw that in. And what we'll do is we'll just do it quick and dirty here. And we'll kind of eyeball it. Eyeball a line here, we'll eyeball a line here, 
We'll just saw that thing off real quick. And we'll just make sure we're using this for the bottom of our box so we can seal that up really good. All right, so the bottom of our box and the top of our box will be longer than these 40 inch sideboards because we extended that length by putting these on the butt end. So we're going to want these 41 and a half. And you can see right here where I gouged this wood just slightly with the saw blade, cutting this off. So we'll make this the bottom of our box. So it won't be a big deal. That gap will be filled in easy enough. So we need, again, we'll double check. 41 and a half, and we should need two of those boards. Okay, so. We have our two boards cut now, and they're going to lay like this against each other and be bolted to the bottom. Now, in the old days of joinery, you would run a seam line here and you would join this together probably before you put it on this box and then you would put a couple of straps across it or runners and they would be clench nailed to hold it in place and one of the things that they used to do in lieu of clamps and you could clamp this to seal this joint but you look at it you see how much of a gaps in it and then you would plane the wood down so there was no gaps or you would plane it to a little bit of a crown for this type of joinery and then you would squeeze them together somehow to hold that joint until it was dry and it would become a single piece of wood at that point that was laminated from the two, and you would use that for the bottom of your box. Now, one of the things that they used to use to do that with was called the pinch dog. And I'm going to show you what pinch dogs are right now. Okay, so using a pinch dog, what you would do is you would make sure that you had a good planed edge that you were going to use that was nice and square. If anything, it was crowned just a little bit. And then you would have probably not used adhesive like this obviously but you would have used some type of hide glue or some type of other gluing element that they had and you'd run a glue line down that joint just like that and I generally just run my finger up and flatten it out like this give myself a good amount on there wipe off the excess then you would take your joint you put it on another flat surface and I've got a board sitting down here for that and you put that joint together and what you would do is you would take this small piece of metal that's wedged and you can see it's wedged here and what that does is when you put that in the wood here and you tap it in with your hammer like this and then you come in on the other side and do the same thing it draws that wood together and you would do that on both ends of the board now when we lift this up, we can see that there's some separation here, and that's because there's a crown in the wood. And that's okay, we'll take our pinch dog and set it here, and we'll start it on one side, like this, and then we'll push the other piece up flush, and get that gap closed as best we can. And as we hammer that pinch dog in, it's going to pull that gap together, just like that. And now we've got a good flat joint there that's going to seal up well and when you're done you would pull out those pinch dogs after your glue was dry and generally speaking you would make these pieces a little bit longer than you needed them so you could cross cut saw that off of there so that the marks or holes from these pinch dogs wouldn't be left in your lumber when you were done but that's going to give you a nice tight joint you can see it squeeze the glue right out of there right there So my plan now is because I have the pinch dogs in place, I can go ahead and screw this bottom down all the way around if I want to and then remove the pinch dogs because I really don't care about the exposure of those two holes on the bottom of my box or the top of my box because I'm not trying to make a piece of cabinetry here. I'm just making a storage crate for the most part.
Okay, so we ran a glue line all the way around now. We went ahead and pre-drilled this one end real quick. We still got our pinch dog in place. I'm going to get this nice and squared up right here. And then we're going to screw this end down. Now we can flip the box around, get everything shored up and centered up. Tighten her down. Taking these pinch dogs out is as simple as shoving a screwdriver in there and they just pop right out. We've got one on each end. Just like that. Something very simple to make on a forge or to cut out a sheet metal or whatever the case may be. That is a very useful item if you're doing much woodworking at all as far as making boxes and things like that with dimensional lumber. Okay, so we've got the basis of our box made here as far as the bottom and the sides. Let everything dry and then we can take a plane and we can square everything up if we want to to make it look a little nicer. Now, one thing that we want to look at here is while we've got this thing upside down like this, we're going to have to put a couple runners on here, maybe a 2x4 stock. That will keep the bottom of the box from getting beat up and give us something to set up off the ground so the bottom doesn't collect moisture as well. Alright, so we screwed our runners in from the bottom here, 7 inches in from both sides. They look pretty good, and we glued them before we put them in there. So now, we've got runners on the box to keep it off the ground, keep the bottom protected a little bit better, and now it's time to start working on the top. Remember, our top's just going to be like a crate, so it's just going to have a couple of runners inside the lid, once we're done, to pressure fit it down into the box, basically. Okay, so our top is, again, going to be two, two by ten, side by side here. And I'll see which way they lay the tightest joint-wise so that I can put my pinch dogs in there, get that joint sealed up, and we'll put a couple straps across it. We can pretty much sit on top of the box for this operation now. I'm going to go ahead and use a clamp here in the center of this thing just to pull this tight and hold it level because it's a little bit bowed that board is and I want that thing level so I'm going to go ahead and use a pipe clamp here I like these pipe clamps because number one they're cheap number two they're pretty easy to use you just find yourself a piece of half inch threaded iron pipe you can buy these clamps off of Amazon for about ten bucks something like that and they work pretty well. You just clamp it on like this, shove that tight against the pipe, like this. Make sure you get your spring going forward on here, like this, and then you just crank it down and hold it in place. that thing together while it dries and give me a good solid seal here and I'll be level and again I can always plane that if I need to. Okay now the runners that are going to go on this part of the lid are actually going to be to the inside of the box and they will be kind of what fits the lid to the box so it'll be the furthest point out here and the furthest point in here right on this end and it'll flip over and fit inside the box to lock that lid in place but this part we want to leave smooth for a bench top 
if we want to use this for a working surface as well as a toolbox. So we're not going to put any straps on the outside of this like a normal packing crate would have. We're going to put our straps to the inside to make a pressure fit for the lid and we're going to leave this surface nice and flat and we'll plane it off so that we can use it for a work surface if we need to. So when we put this runner on, basically this is what we're looking for. We want to be three quarters of an inch back here, which is the thickness of our lumber. And we want to be three quarters of an inch back here to here. Get that thing centered up and bolted down so that when the lid flips over, this board locks it this direction and this direction. But it will be inside the box and not outside on the working surface. But we can work out here with it to get it all attached while this thing's drying. That's not a big deal. We can eyeball where that thing goes just by leaving our lid even on the box like it is now. We can pretty much eyeball exactly where that thing's supposed to go and exactly where the thing's supposed to sit. Now this is a 17 inch board. We need to cut inside the line of that 17 inches to make it just a little bit short. So it's not a real sloppy fit, but it's not really a friction friction fit either because we don't want to put any stress on the box. And I've cut this inside the line at 17 and I'm eyeballing over the top right now just to make sure it's going to fit. Okay, so I put a bunch of glue on this thing now. And I'm just going to set this thing down on here, move it around a little bit, spread the glue out, and eyeball things up. If it's just a little bit further than three quarters here, I don't care. But I'm going to take a tape measure. Because that's kind of a critical measurement. This is almost exactly three quarters. So I'd like to put this at just about an inch. So it's got a quarter of an inch of play there. And I can move it while the glue's drying. I can move it easy enough. And then we've got to have about three quarters on both sides. That's pretty good. Now we can put this thing in with screws. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clamp this with a wood clamp on this side <clears throat> real quick just to hold it in place while well, I put some screws in it. Okay, so once we get to that point, we get those battens screwed on. Pretty much have a tight fit of our lid here. We should be able to put that thing in there, slide it in place, drop it down, just like that. You've got a little bit of play on each side, which is what I wanted. You got zero play back and forth. Now, let's look at this side here real fast. Let's see if it's reversible. In theory, it should be. Okay, good. So it doesn't matter which way we put the lid on, it's going to work now. Okay, so what happened here was my sawing was off. And this board's a little bit longer than this board is. So I'm going to shove this forward. Go ahead and pull this pinch dog out. Strike a straight line across here and saw that off so it's even. That'll make a better looking box. It's functional the way it is, but I like it a little bit better. Alright, so we're going to drill a couple of handle holes in here for rope handles and I'm going to show you the real simple to measure the spot I want to put those. Just turn our box up on end here like this. And all I did was take a double length of this carpenter square, squared it up here, down one thickness, down two thicknesses, came in six inches on this side, just like this and then I'm going to come in six inches on the other side I'm a little off square because of my crown there there we go I can eyeball that pretty well 
So we'll put a hole here and a hole here that's three quarters of an inch. And we'll be ready to go. When I drill these holes, I don't drill them all the way through. I get my bit centered. And it wouldn't matter if this was a hand drilling bit or an electric bit. I'm going to push it down until I feel the drill come through. The tip of that drill come through and I'm going to stop. I'll do the same thing on this side. Then I'll go come up from the other side of the box so that I'll split the holes out. That'll give me four nice clean holes. I'm just going to use simple rope here. So I'm just going to tie an overhand knot in my rope right here, just like this, and tighten it down real good. Pull it through. Decide how long I want my handles to be. They really don't need to hang any further down than the bottom of the box like this. I just as soon tie my knot right there and I'll just take a twist in the line right there take an overhand bite like this put my rope right back through that bite just like that and tighten it down when I pull that through and tighten it up that should give me a handle about the length of my box then I can just trim this off Number two makes good short work of that. So that's one handle. Now I need one on the other side exactly like it. Okay, so now we have a really good box we can put the majority of our large woodworking tools in. We have a large felling axe here redone by Craig Roost, Axe Junkies. This is a uh, three and a half pound New Jersey style felling axe. I have a carpenter's ads here that I dug up in Texas. That was redone by my buddy Chris Wick, one of my instructors at Pathfinder School. This large splitting head that was refabbed and redone by my buddy Chris Wick as well. Came from Croatia. It was a gift to me. Of course, all of this stuff would have leather masks on it. I've got to make leather masks for some of this stuff yet. Another U.S. Forest Service felling axe that I recently redid myself. My favorite bucking saw can tuck right in there. And then a few of my handmade tools can go in there as well. I can put my hand forge fro down in there easy enough. My draw knife, my stock knife. The U-bracket for my stock knife can sit down inside there for a stump. I can go ahead and put my maul in there. And if I wanted to, I've got my brace handle I made as well. I could put a couple of bits in there. Or I could put a refab one in there. I have two different sizes here. This one is a one inch. And this one is a two inch. They'll sit right in there. Just like that for making holes and boring things like that and then any other tools that I want to put in there I've got plenty more room in there to put woodworking tools hey guys I hope you enjoyed this quick simple video on how to make a pine toolbox again it's just a simple crate but I thought it would be an interesting video to show how the wood goes together and talk a little bit about historical joinery while we we're at it we put this thing together with screws and wood glue didn't take very long to do it, probably in real time, less than an hour, to be honest with you, to put this together. And it's going to hold well more than the large tools that I have. I'm going to make another box out of some of the other wood that I have that's a little bit smaller. It's going to be specifically for saws and things like that, and then another smaller box for smaller woodworking tools. So those videos will come in the future. 
appreciate you joining me today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, and friends, and I'll be back for another video.